Hello everyone. What you see before you is a scan of a homework problem from a couple semesters back in which the student, students were asked to find the slope given those two points. And what you see here are my grading notes to the students saying, hey look, you got this inverted. The four should be on top and the three should be on the bottom. Please note, I know most of you know the formula for slope. Please note that the student here was very careful. They wrote in x sub 1 above the 8 and x sub 2 above the 2 and so forth with y sub 1 and y sub 2 preparatory for using the formula for slope and they still got it wrong and so my point here what I'm going to introduce to you here is, is a hack to eliminate the errors the human error that happens when you translate these numbers into the formula and believe me those errors happen all the time even if you're a good student like this student was so I'm going to show you the hack in just a second, but I'm going to throw out a caveat that how important a hack, hack is because if you're going on in math, let's say you're going on to calculus, you are going to be finding the slope a thousand times. And so why not find a technique, a hack that eliminates the errors from maybe 10 out of every thousand times you do it to zero out of every thousand times. This gift that I just brought in is from the Wikipedia for calculus. and what it shows is a function in blue, a curvy function in which the student will be asked to find the slope at any point along the function. That pretty much is first semester calculus, at least half of it. And what the gift illustrates is how that slope changes as the point here moves along the function. Uh, I'm going to run the animation here in a second, but I want to just point out one thing. You know two points to find a line and from those two points, like the problem behind here, you can find the slope. Well, we only see one point here, so how are you computing the slope with just one point? You need two points. And I want you to imagine that this black dot is actually two points on the blue function super close together. And those two points define a line, and you can put those two points into the formula like was being attempted here, and you can generate the slope. So let's run the animation. Notice that green is a positive slope and zero slope is black. So we're going to see a black slope here, horizontal line. Red is a negative slope falling from left to right. And now a zero slope and then once again we go to green. Up at the top, when we turn the corner, we're going to go to a zero horizontal line and then back to a negative value sloped. Oh, slopes. Okay, just a curious gift there that I hope piques your interest that and tells you that you know what calculus might not be that hard so let me show you my hack I've written the two points down one beneath the other one above the other the order in which you write these points doesn't matter and I'm gonna do the problem again with the two common negative one on top now what you do in this hack there is no formula to memorize but I understand you've dealt with the formula so I'm you know that there's subtraction of the y's on top and there's subtraction of the x's on the bottom this idea this process builds on that knowledge here's what I do every time I figure slope I draw an arrow just like that that forces me to take the 7 and the negative 1 in a particular order and then I do my subtraction of them that's the top of the fraction that's the rise I do the same arrow to create the bottom of the fraction and I get the arrow forces me, it's the hygienic move, it forces me to get these numbers in the right order. So I have an 8 and a 2 with a minus sign between them. Now all I have to do is crunch it out. On top I have a 7 minus a minus 1 which is the same as 7 plus 1 which is the same as 8. On the bottom I have a 6 and notice that this reduces to 4 thirds and that is in fact the slope 3 over and 4 up, 3 over and 4 up. Okay I'm gonna work it again this time with the points inverted. Again, my, this arrow forces me to mine my p's and q's or x's and y's if you will. I've got a negative 1 minus 7 on top. On the bottom I'm going to have a 2 minus 8. 2 minus 8. We go ahead and we crunch this out. I get a negative 8 on top. I get a negative 6 on the bottom. A negative divided by a negative is positive, so we can simply ignore the minus signs. And so we just simply reduce 8 sixths to get 4 thirds. 3 over and 4 up. So there you go. 
I think it's a nice hack. I use it. When I took calculus, I used it all the time. I think I only blew it one time on a exam. So it's not completely idiot proof, but it will reduce your error rate to maybe one out of a thousand, maybe even zero out of a thousand. I hope that helps. I'll be talking to you again soon.